morning it's Wednesday and today we have a very relaxed day we have an interview with Marcel from Dropbox for PI TV and for Stefan and he's one of our models for the series about our models and of course we're gonna do that in Dutch and English today is also the first day we're gonna be using the Alpha 6500 for the vlog and I'm now walking outside there's a lot of wind and I'm very curious how the sound is because we are using a Rode mic with actually a dead cat on top. I still find that name very weird, but it should be okay. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Here we have a really cool mirror and we're going to use this because the Alpha 6500 doesn't have a flip off screen. So I'm going to place this behind it so I can see what I'm filming. Okay, so what is the first response from an intern that sees a dead cat on top of a microphone? Can I pet it? <laughs> Isn't that cute? Okay, first up for today, we have to change something in the camper. And that's actually something that frustrates the heck out of me. Now, this is part of our satellite disk system. And every time when we start the season, we have to send this one in to BMSAT for an update. And I think it's ridiculous. It's an Oyster system. It's a very expensive system. And every time when the batteries are changed or it came without power, they have to update the firmware because according to them, the firmware gets deleted when it runs out of power. Ridiculous, but anyway, 50 euros less on my bank account. And we have to start building this in again. And it's very tight, so not one of my favorite chores. Okay, the first one is the easy one. We have to connect this one again. The second one is a totally different story. That one sucks. So we have to open up this. And then we have to get it all the way up there. And those cables are incredibly tight. And as you can see here, it's an incredibly tight space. So wish me luck. And by the way, I hate those connectors, especially when it's cold. Okay, part one. First connect the cable. Get a different screwdriver. Okay, connect these. Trying to figure out how. At some point you're also willing to accept that you can't replace them, but of course we don't give up that easily. There we go, that's one. Ah, that's that. There we go. Part one succeeded, but that was the easy one. Okay, part two. This one really sucks. Let's first get all the connectors in. And this is terrible when your hands are cold, but now it's okay. Now the top connectors. Uh, let's start out with the easy one, although there is not really an easy one. Now I can't move it anymore, so I can't see what I'm doing. So everything else I have to do on touch. It's a really tight fit and cables are really short. It's always the last one. There we go. Okay. Now we have one part left. Yeah, and it's the fuse. Yeah, I know. You don't need it? Yeah, I do need the fuse, but... It's so tight you don't even have to screw it in, but we're still going to do it. As soon as I find the screw, where did I leave it? Yeah, there we go. Good enough. And now the fuse. Because make sure, boys and girls, if you do something like this, you first take off the power. Because otherwise, you'll get a nice haircut. Okay, let's turn this one in. And that sounds better. There we go. And now we have power here. Okay, so that concludes our version of Handiwork with Frank. 
Now let's see if it works. But I have to send Anuik out because the camper is actually under a roof. And I think we have enough space, don't you think, Anuik? Let's try. Okay, we're gonna try. It worked. Yep, that's the artist entrance of the studio. Normally that's closed, but because we have the camper on power, it's actually open now. Okay, I'm gonna set up the mirror so that I can see what my camera is doing. So I'm gonna set up the mirror here. And then when I move to my seating location, I can actually see the display of the camera. At least, I hope I can, because it's a, well, it's not so wide of a mirror, but let's see if it works. Okay, I've set everything up. I can see myself in a mirror and it's far from perfect. Perfect would of course be a flip out screen because on location I really can't bring this mirror. But combining the Yobi pot with the leveler inside and the mirror in the back, it's actually very, very workable. I can see exactly what my composition does, if my focus is still on my face, how close I can get to the camera. So works great and another option of course with the sony's is you can use your iphone as an external display with the play memory apps so overall very workable for in the studio and now i have to do some more work and i'm going to show you what now one of the things that happens a lot is that manufacturers or clients ask for images and it's not doable to go through your Lightroom catalog every time and just select the images and send them to them. So what we actually do is we create a so-called POS folder on Dropbox. Now POS folder is a folder on Dropbox where we have all the images that I like, all the images where I go like, okay, whatever they choose, it's a great image, it represents my work, you can use this. And so we give them the link to the POS folder and every once in a while, like every month, we actually update that folder. The other thing I have to do is update the workshop agenda because well people want to plan in advance and a lot of workshops are already sold out so we're going to create some new workshop dates oh and do you remember the mouse mat problem we had with the mx master and we got me this really nice black mouse bed so still looking for a great other one but for now this one will do quick tip in between if you use an mx master you can program the keys right so you can do that in the software now one of the most used actions for me is actually open this computer because i want to know what on a hard drive is i want to access the network so you can of course go to my computer every time and click it but you can also program and that's what i did i actually programmed this big button as my computer. So every time I click this one, it will actually open my computer. And you can do that in the software from Logitech. So that's a really quick tip for you guys. Okay, now overall creating a POS map can be a really hard work, especially if you don't do any work before. But if you have a good workflow, it's actually incredibly easy. I'm gonna show you how I do it in Lightroom and I hope this helps you guys out to do it this way too, because this really saves you a lot of work and it's also really great to find back some images. So in Lightroom, you can use something called keywords. You see them over here. Now I created a keyword called Slideshow FD. And when you see something like this, it doesn't focus this close, sorry guys, but there's like a little icon here and that means that there's actually a keyword attached. Now in Lightroom you can create smart albums as you can see here. And what you now actually do is you go to Slideshow FD and there we go. Here we have all the images that I consider my best images. And the only thing I have to do is export these images to my POS folder. And of course we already exported most of them. So I only have to export the newer ones. And the cool thing about Dropbox is that you only copy the newer files to it. So I can actually export, let's say, from a month ago and I will only upload the newer versions because the other ones are already on there. So I hope this tips helps you out a little bit. And remember, behind the closed doors is a vlog. So I didn't do any screen recording of this tip. If you think it's an interesting tip, just drop me an email or leave comments below and we'll make a proper instructional video of it or a tip for quite frankly, or digital classroom. You know what I mean, right? 
Okay, so let's export them to Dropbox and then we actually have an interview with Marcel from Dropbox for PITV. -PI yeah, that's Dutch. PITV. Okay, I'm done with the whole agenda for the workshops and we're now done till, I believe, August 1st. Now it's time to record some videos and the first one is actually for a Yobi. I love those Yobi pods. They're on my camera almost constantly and I have them on my iPhone for the time lapse you see in the vlog. Really great. And the Gorilla pods are the topic for the first video. Okay, Anouk, you're setting everything up for the video, right? Yeah. The and next what video thing. are we going to do? About the Yobi pods. The Gorilla pods. Yeah. And you can actually already see on the monitor you can see my Gorilla Pot on the new 6500. That's how we use them at the moment. And this is, for example, one of the ways that I use the Yobi Pots. Now, at the moment, you can't see what I'm doing, right? So let's turn this around so you can actually see the image from Anouk's camera. And there we go. So when I do the vlog, I actually have my Yobi Pot extended like this. Let me see if we can still get it in the picture. There we go. And I actually stole this from Casey Neistat. And it's a really cool way because now I have it on the Yobi pot and I can actually extend it so you can see a little bit more of me or I can get it a little bit closer and turning the camera around is also much easier by using this. So Enrik, are you almost ready? You're doing audio now? Yeah. Okay, so I have to put up my audio and then we're done to record. We did something really important. She cleaned up the table. Look at the difference. <laughs> Okay, we set up all the Yobi pots and Anouk is almost ready to film, so it's going to be interesting. And by the way, I now actually, when I see the light, I actually see that my dead cat from the road mic is actually in the frame. He needs a haircut. <laughs> he needs a haircut, yeah. So that's weird. Let's hope that the whole video isn't ruined, but I will take it off. I have another, for another cat for you. Oh, you have another cat for me, but will it fit this one? I have no clue. No, no, that's too small. It's for the other mic. Yeah, I think so too. The mail. And I think that big box is going to make me incredibly happy. But most big boxes do. Okay. Now let's see what we got. Five day deal and a big box. Okay, let's start with the five day deal. Okay, so this is from 5 Day Deal and it's actually something to write on and a personal note. So what is 5 Day Deal? It's an organization that gives you guys a lot of discounts and they do it several times a year and it's a collection of ebooks. Uh, photography material, uh, plugins, and this time we actually participated also as a creator, so we gave some instructional videos. The nice thing is you guys don't save a lot of money as the only benefit, but they also give a lot of the money to ch charity, and that's something we stand completely behind. And of course getting then something that's a little bit more personal than just an email saying thank you, really cool. Five day deal, thank you very much, and we'll participate without a doubt in the next one. The big box. Always be careful. Oh, do you want to see what's in? The Drobo. So this is the Drobo 5C and that means it's connected to USB-C for extra speed. And why the Drobo? Very simple, backups are incredibly important and that's why we actually have Synology NASes over here. So we have all our backups on a NAS. The thing is a NAS is connected via the network and with Lightroom you can have a problem. If you open up a file that you already worked on, work it in Photoshop and want to save it, it won't allow you to save it in the same position because it's on a NAS. So we also use external hard drives. Let me show you. So we have external hard drives over here and that's where we have all our data stored. And this is very fast, it's connected via a SATA, but it's not perfect. Now why is it not perfect? For the very simple reason, if I have to upgrade a drive, I have to take out the drive and copy everything to a new drive and that takes a long time because those are four, six terabyte drives. With this solution you have approximately the same thing as you have with a Synology NAS. 
So you have a lot of hard drives in there. And if one drive actually runs out of space, you just take the drive out, put a new drive in, and it rebuilds itself. The thing is, you don't have the problem with saving your files in the same location. Because originally, this is not a NAS. This is actually like a huge external hard drive. So I'm really looking forward to installing this in our studio, pump some hard drives in there, and start copying some files. Don't you just love boxes that tell a story? Welcome to the world of... What world? Okay, packaging is really nice. Because you have this little shopping bag with your data. And there we have the Drobo. It's a really small device, but I like them a little bit smaller. It's not necessary to make it big. And let's start filling it up with hard drives and see how it works. Okay, this is a mix of hard drives. Not formatted, some are used, some are new. And let's see how the Drobo handles this. And this is the Drobo without the cover. And by the way, the cover is really nice because it functions also as a manual. So you can actually see what the drive letters, sorry, what the LEDs are doing. And let's hope we never see the red one. Okay, putting drives in is really easy. Just slide it in. And there you go. So let's fill her up. Okay, I have four drives in. Let's connect it to the computer and see how it works. The front cover really connects easily because it's magnetic. So there you go. Can't do it wrong. And I love stuff that you can't do wrong. Look at the difference in size. This is the old solution. This is the Drobo. That's awesome. I really like to save on space. And, and I believe the limit on the Drobo is about 64 terabytes. So that should be more than enough for even the most power hungry and space hungry photographer or videographer out there. And if you need more, just add another Drobo. No problem. Okay, downloading the drivers, because the drivers that are delivered with the system are always older, so always download the newest from the website. Okay, I'm literally five minutes in and I'm already formatting the drives. Every drive was detected, so looks very good. Okay, now before I have any data on it, let's see if we can break it or make it fail. By just putting a hard drive in, hot swappable. It should work, but you never know. Okay, I left the top part open. So let's put in the hard drive. It's a six terabyte. This is a new drive, so never used. There we go. It's in. Let's wait for the LED. Okay, it takes a little while. go that's nice okay we see a message that there has been a new drive detected so far so good but this is how it's supposed to work guys so if it would go wrong that would actually be bad okay let's see if it added the drives so capacity was 12.5 and indeed is now 18.01 so that worked great you know the best thing about the Drobo is actually the noise. Now, you don't hear a lot of noise now in the background, but let me, let me just show you what I mean. Okay, so this is my computer. As you can hear, it's pretty silent. Here we have the Drobo, pretty silent. And now watch this. It's not bad but you can hear that it's a lot of noise coming from the towers and everything that can be more silent in a studio environment I really like and this one is really silent now the most important thing when you start up a NAS or in this case a Drobo is that you have to make your files very very easily findable but also very easy to back up because backups are very important now in the old system we had one storage device dedicated to retouched images that was called retouched images we have one device dedicated to the raw files and we have one device dedicated for video and one for the rest. Because we now only have one device, we're only going to make one volume. So I'm going to actually make folders called retouched, raw images, 
everything else and video. And in those folders, I will create exactly the same structure. So I will literally copy the old drives into the folders on the new device. That way for Lightroom, it's very easy to find everything back because now it is scattered over several drive letters. And now it can actually find it in one location, the Drobo. And for the backups later, it's very easy because now I can actually tell my backup system, copy those folders to the NAS. Now one could say, why not one folder and just copy that whole folder? And you have to realize that when you do a copy, it actually scans those folders. So the more files are in the folder and the more structures, the longer the scanning process takes. So it's very wise to not do that. So let's start creating it and start the backup process. And there you have it. Hey, Annelie and Kim are setting everything up for the interview with Stefan. He's first and that's going to be a Dutch interview. And after that, I'm going to do an English interview for the Meet Our Model series. Okay, so and we just finished the interview with Stefan and I finished the interview with Stefan and the interviews will be online very soon, but let me introduce Stefan to you guys directly. Hey Stefan, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Did you like the interviews? Yes, I liked it. Okay, great. Now for the rest, you have to wait until we upload the interviews. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Just finished the interview with Marcel from Dropbox. Hey Marcel, how are you? Hey Frank, I'm fine. It was great being here. Yeah, so you're from Dropbox, right? Yes, I'm working for Dropbox. And you're also at Professional Imaging. Yeah, I will be there to talk to all the people who use Dropbox. It's uh, really nice to be there because we have like a, a very uh, a, an audience which is really uh, uh, important for the Dropbox uh, team. So uh, I would like to speak to everybody there. Yeah. Cool. So if you're visiting Professional Imaging, make sure you visit our booth because Dropbox is actually next to us and they're giving away a lot of free stuff. So make sure you check out Professional Imaging. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marcel. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, guys, we're done for today. This was today's episode of Behind the Closed Doors. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, if you like what we do, please subscribe to our channel and leave comments below. And of course, tell other people about it. I'm not going to edit this episode. And tomorrow, we have a very special episode of Behind the Closed Doors. It's a mix between the vlog and something else. You're going to see that tomorrow. Bye, guys.